All right, let's talk to the suspicious gardener. I do need to get some stuff from her anyway, so. I can't believe it's snowing again. The young woman watches the falling snow in size. It felt like springtime just a few days ago. Uh, do you still have your salts? I think I could use some. Yeah, let's get what we need from our first and then go into the into the stuff. Sure. I'm done with them. She takes a small capsule out of her breast pocket and hands it to you. Go easy on that stuff. It gave me a terrible headache. Alright, so tell me, what exactly have you been doing in your greenhouse in March? Well, uh, this might be the last snow we get. At least I hope so. Snow has nutrients in it. Helps everything green up in the spring. At least that's what my grandma always told me. She smiles shyly. Yes, think about the cute grandma, not the weird snow. What nutrients? Nitrogen and sulfur mostly. And whatever factories and aerostatics exhale too, I guess. Let's squint first, because I feel if we ask about the grandma, then our bonus will go away. Stop looking at her. Look around. What do you see? An entrance to the yard, the plaza, the traffic jam. Uh, entrance to the yard? That's right. And the canal, the bookstore, the harbor gates. This is a great vantage point for keeping an eye on you. Are you by any chance keeping an eye on us? No. Of course not. I don't understand what this is about. She looks towards the yard and her expression clears. The kid did this, right? The red-haired rat? Can't say a sentence without or kipped? He's always giving me trouble. That's not important right now. It is. Because he sent you to harass me, didn't he? You shouldn't listen to him. It was probably him who wrote that. Hmm. You've been resting here for... Quite a while, haven't you? The lieutenant intervenes, looking at her intently. Yes, I'm tired. I understand. The RCM isn't welcome here, and the locals want to keep an eye on us. There's silence. The smallest of smiles. Ho, ho, ho. Caught you now. That's okay, miss. Do what you have to do. I think we're done here. Let's go. Hmm. The gardener is giving us very strange looks for some reason. A little bit sus, but uh, I guess I'll leave it at that. Okay, let's ignore- oh, what's this? There are several footprints in the mud, left by work boots. Anywhere from 6 to 12 pairs have walked here. What kind of boots? Heavy workers' boots with reinforced toes and hobnails all over the yard. Isn't this something an industrial worker would wear? Lieutenant, workers' boot tracks. Noted. All right, let's try and get an exact count. Maybe more than 12. No, eight pairs of boots have shuffled back and forth in the mud. Let's go over them one by one. One, standard work boot. Steel reinforced toes, number 46. Two, standard work boot. Steel reinforced toes, number 44. Three, hobnailed work boot. Steel reinforced toes, number 43. Four, standard work boot. Number 45 or 46. Wait, which is it? You don't know. It's a miracle you can tell the prints apart as it is. The cold must have preserved them. Count more. Five. Another standard work boot. Steel reinforced toes. Number 44. Six. An aberration. Light as air. Even pace. Same make of boot, but number 41. Hmm. Male or female? I'm guessing female. Smaller feet. Impossible to tell. Could also have been an adolescent. The gait is undeveloped. Or maybe it's Kuno. Kuno with his fucking shoes. Right. I'm pretty good at this, ain't I? You're not bad. It's as if the whole world darkens. Everything else has a thin film of unimportance on it. And the tracks burn in the middle of it, in a strange, beautiful way. Count the rest. Seven. The glowing outline of a standard work boot. Number 46. But the imprints are twice as deep as the others. The weight exceeds 200 kilograms. 
eight, and yet another standard work boot, number 44. There's an aberration in the pattern of the sole, however. The right sole is smoother, more worn. How many? Hmm. 400 million. Eight. I was pretty off then. I counted 20. The same guys are going back and forth are way off. Way... Now let's be nice. Same guys are going back and forth. I never got the hang of it. Hyperopia. Do you see anything out of the ordinary? Light step, number 41. A heavy one, 200 kilograms. An aberration, one sole is smoother than the other. Uh, let's... If we can only do one at a time, let's start with this one, because I think this is the dude that was carrying the body. 200? Could it be the combined weight of two people, one carrying the other who's tied up? Let's say a heavily built worker carrying a similarly built, soon-to-be-dead man. He might be right. 200 kilograms of living weight is unlikely. Have you seen people that are that heavy? I have. It is possible. Uh, one of them was carrying him over. Possibly, yes. The lieutenant marks something down in his notebook. But why? You're thinking, why did they carry him? Yeah, I was wondering the same thing. Wouldn't it have been easier to drag him, or have two people carry him instead of one? Yes, they could have used the makeshift stretcher or just march him up to the gallows. Hmm... Maybe the victim wasn't conscious, but then why wouldn't they drag him? Maybe the victim refused to walk to his own lynching, but that doesn't answer the question either, because two people could have easily carried him. Hmm. But I guess lugging about dead weight with two people would be more difficult than with one, huh? Well, it would be easier, but it'd be less... It would be easier and smoother to do it with one person, as in to do it quickly, than with two. So maybe he wasn't conscious. Even easier to carry on a stretcher, or between two men. Anyway, it's for future consideration. What else can you see? Light step, number 41 shoe. A woman, or a kid? It could be a woman, or it could be fucking Kuno, but uh, I doubt Kuno was around during that, so it could be a woman. Okay, how do you know? He knows it's hard to discern sex from a person's gait. I... Don't. Or I do, or I am saying random things while looking at holes in the mud. I have no idea where any of this is coming from. Mmm. I don't. Understood. Anything else? An aberration. One soul is smoother than the other. This one I'm not so sure about. What could have possibly caused one soul to be smoother than the other? Interesting. Let's name it the old soul. Do you have any ideas, Lieutenant? Someone operating a workbench with a pedal? Like a joiner at the harbor. Or maybe a drummer? So one of these people we are looking for is a drummer? No, it's not. Forget I said it. We are not looking for a drummer. I don't know. Could be. Perhaps it could be a driver. A driver would wear out the right shoe before the left. The accelerator is on the right. Oh. That's true. Interesting, if only I had come up with that idea. <laughs> he doesn't seem to hear you. Looking south, toward the traffic jam instead. The machines are silent. The engines are all turned off. We should keep our eyes open around the traffic jam. See whether anyone strikes out as a potential suspect. Seems prudent, no? Yeah, prudent. Mm -hmm. Alright, how old do you think these tracks are? I assume around seven days, since that's how long the body's been up there. A week, maybe? Seven days would fit the time frame provided to us by the caller, who reported the hanging. Yeah. It is not impossible. How do you know? I pulled last week's forecast for coastal Havashon. Seven days below freezing. The day before, the day of his hanging, was the last warm day. Oh. Correct again. Sub-zero temperatures would preserve the tracks in a good state. The commotion here could have taken place a week ago. What do you think happened here? What do I think? A mob of people brought something heavy to the tree. One of them was carrying the victim. They shuffled around, especially under the tree. Then, after hoisting him up, they stood in a semicircle facing his direction. At first glance, this appears to be a lynching. Indeed. 
They all stood in a row here and looked at the tree. Yes, everything fits so well. Carried him over, hoisted him up, watched him hang. Right, this so we have easy. So we have a basic uh, timeline of what occurred a few minutes or during his death. I think we have a firm understanding of what happened here. The lieutenant's eyes narrow. He's thinking to himself. Either way, what else? We've been through it all. We've been through all of it. All right. Good detective work right there. Okay, let's try and get back to the tree. I mean, the dude in the tree. There he still is, looking right through you with his white eyes. The body below is entirely dedicated to that corpse smell. Emitting it is all it does now. Okay, let's try this a second time. The ammonia only makes it worse. The combination forces tears out of your ducts. You manage to keep it in once. The second time, not so much. When the vomiting is done, your cheeks are wet with tears. <sighs> Mother of mercy. I am glad I'm not a detective. The ammonia didn't help at all. I think I don't want to be a cop anymore. Spit and say nothing. Yeah, the ammonia didn't help at all. Nor does the wind right now. You feel the lieutenant pat your back rhythmically. I've seen strong men turn themselves inside out for hours. You are facing tough odds here. Alcohol withdrawal makes it considerably harder. Why can't I keep it in if I've been a cop my whole life? Or this is bullshit. I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to be a cop. Or can't we do something else? I think I want to solve something else right now. Or do it without me, I just can't keep it down. Yeah, why can't I do it? I've been a cop. I've seen captains puke their guts out. It never gets easier. You never get used to the smell. Every Monday he's got every day. Throw up, investigate. Throw up, initial autopsy. Throw up, baguette. Baguette? <laughs> baguette. He pats your back again. Then drive to the station. Maybe throw up on the way there, if you didn't bag the thing tight enough. You seem fu you seem to be fine. I think I've lost my sense of smell. There is a pause. A white lie. Not being hungover helps, too. Alright, can't we do something else? I think I want to solve something else now. That's probably a good idea. Clear our heads. But before we can do that... He withdraws his hand from your back and looks you in the eye. You need to get your shit together. Okay, okay. Shake your head, no. But I don't want to get my shit together. But my shit already is together. Okay. We should go talk to the locals. Find something else to do while the wind changes. It's pretty bad right now. Give it half an hour. Get yourself together. Then come back and have another go. Alright, turn away to leave. Alright. Uh, ooh, volumetric shit compressor. Yes. Let's try that. Ugh, mother of mercy. This has not been... Oh, what's this? And he's finally stopped throwing stuff. This trash container that. is locked. The sliding lid has a padlock that says, whirling in rags. Why am I looking at you, trash container? You're just a trash container. Maybe you're prioritizing it. Well, how do we get the lock open? We could try using a pry bar. The one you took from my motor carriage, or... Or, Lieutenant? Or we could ask for a key from the manager of the Whirling in Rags. He probably has one. He might also have information. This is better than the pry bar idea. Alright. Okay, inspect the victim's body. Da da da, we try that and open the trash container. That didn't really work. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Those in white are available to try now. I'll have to keep a. Uh, I'll have to keep the uh, thing in mind with the uh, jumping off the roof. That sounds kind of bad out of context, but you know, I'm sure I'll be fine. Need to pass the time by a book. Yep. All right. All right. All right. All right. Ooh, the door is open. 
Hello. The dishes are drying. The smell of chemicals and pine trees. Who is this gentleman? A thin man is smoking below an exhaust hood, occasionally sipping from his mug. This must be the Whirling's cook. As you step in, he nods toward the table and says something in a completely foreign language. The only words you can make out are Garanzi and Kubek. Okay, it's definitely not his name. Whatever you do, please don't call him Garanzi Kubek. Please, it's not funny. <laughs> okay, let's let's follow logic's advice. Hello, sir. Got time for a few questions? The man puts his cup down and replies something. His left hand drawing arcs in the air. Uh, you got some impressive pots there. He smiles and bangs his ladle against each of his pots in turn. It's almost like music, especially with the sounds of assorted dishes boiling and simmering on the stove. All right, I guess I'll leave. And this. An aroma of spices, alcohol, and tomato hangs in the air. Okay, let's go chat with guards. We do have to speak with them about some things. Can I help you? Uh, is the trash container up back yours? Mine? No, it belongs to the Whirling in Rags. Thank you for clearing that up. Why do you keep the container locked? Why? To keep the hobos and drunks out. That's why. And the neighbors too. They put their trash there and they don't pay for the garbage company. I thought as much. And are you the only party with access to the trash container? Well, yes. Us and the garbage disposal company. It seems a little callous, doesn't it? Something stirs in you. Uh, I wonder what this feeling is. Or no, it does. Nothing stirs in me. It isn't callous and it's common sense. You know what? Let us knock upon the door of curiosity and see where this goes. Prod at him and find out. Uh, does it seem callous to you? Guarding even your leftovers from the poor? Callous? What are you, Kras Mazov? Almost all establishments in Revishol keep their trash locked. The whirling in rags is not special in that regard. Kras Mazov, nom de gear, was an economist and a historical materialist. He was a leading figure on the Grad side of the Centennial Revolution, where he headed the nine-day government. Mazov is considered the father of scientific communism, Mazovian thought, or Mazovianism. Hmm. It seems like he's this universe's, uh, uh, what's the name of the guy that came up with socialism? Karl Marx? Yeah, I think that's him. Uh, yum, yum, tell me more. He killed himself. Oh. Well. I am no crass myself. <laughs> no one was implying you were, officer. Where were we? Uh, we need those keys. What do you need them for? It concerns the case. Please cooperate. Just bring them back once you're done, please. Okay. Let's talk about the other thing. I talked to Sylvie. She left because of me, not you. Wait, what? But what about the bird? The bird? Yes, the bird. I found it lying on the floor with a broken wing the morning she left. She didn't break it, I did. I threw it against the wall. You broke the skewer! His face is flushed with emotions, a rash covering his neck. I assure you it was him. <laughs> Why on earth did you have to break the skewer? Uh, it's a mystery. You tell me. I just break things, it's the way I am. Maybe I have a vendetta against it. It's a mystery. <laughs> I can't believe it. I was so sure it was Sylvie. Even worse, I thought she was trying to send me a message. A symbol of hope and all. A tender type of hope. Something stirs in you. Perhaps this is why you broke it. Really? Hmm. All right. Did she say anything else? About me, you know? Did, did she say anything about me? She said she was flattered. It was just bad timing. Really? I, I, should, I should give her a call then. The man doesn't know what to say. He wipes his brow and stares at the counter. Thanks, I guess. Was there anything else you wanted, or...? We were sort of hoping there would be a gun, an expensive jewel, or at least a sword in it for you if you deliver the message. 
Oh well. Oh, by the way, I'm going to sing karaoke here. Absolutely out of the question. <laughs> Come on. Absolutely in the question. First, we find a sad banger. Then we sing this place to shit. <laughs> Your body is ready, sire. Okay. I've seen something here at the Whirling Guards I think I need to talk about. What thing? I saw a sign that said the mess hall is reserved for the Union. Yes, not the whole damn Union, thank God. Just the nastiest and loudest faction. He tosses his head in disdain. They come here in the evenings. Dumb, unruly types. Think they're big shit. But they're good customers. They place big orders and always pay on time. We should find out who this Lord Faction is occupying the booth. Lordness means talkative, and we need info. He gives you a meaningful nod. Yeah, that is true. Alright, how do we find them? We don't. We have to wait. They'll show up sooner or later. Men get hungry, even striking men. If not today, then they'll be here tomorrow. Alright. There are these things called days. You sleep between them. He's saying they'll come after you've slept. Just making clear you got that. Gee, thanks a lot, Logic, for your invaluable input. Alright, there's something else I want to ask about. What? He sounds so tired. By the way, you should come back to this thing-based questionnaire if you see anything interesting in the whirling later. Alright, goodbye. Okay, uh, I still owe this dude 120 fucking real or royale or whatever, and I only have eight. Oh. That sugary black rum stain on the counter makes you teary-eyed with joy. It's almost touching how syrupy and sticky it is. How long have you been up already? Uh, two hours? An hour would have been bad. Two hours is mystical. You have truly wiped out all trace of yourself if you haven't thought about rum and lemonade yet. Alright, I've been secretly thinking about it all this time, or actually, should I be thinking about this? Looks like drinking hasn't turned out too well for me. Or now that you mention it, I do need a rum and lemonade. I love for God to serve me up a beverage. Nah. Drinking has not helped this guy. Let's try and turn his life around, huh? Maybe you haven't turned out well for your drinking. Have you thought about that? Get a goddamn rum and lemonade to yourself, boy. Or better yet, lick that stain off the counter. No. What happened, man? You used to be cool. Go get your boring normal person drink then. Get your drink on and your act together. Fine booze and drink it. No. No, I do not think I will. Find out who is in the Union box. Guards has told you some unruly Union men gather in the mess hall of the Whirling and Rags. They're not there today, but most likely they'll eventually show up. Keep an eye out for them, or... The hangover feels really bad. You have to take the edge off. Find a ball of alcohol and put in your hand. Equip it in the held slot. And the magic will happen by its own. No. I do not think I will be doing that. Alcohol is tur alcohol is what caused this entire situation to happen. The meaning of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. So I'm trying something different. All right. Uh, let's ignore the Kuno and go check out the dumpster. This trash container is locked. The sliding lid as a padlock that says, whirling in rags. Alright, let's open the lock with the key. With a well-oiled crack, the lock pops open. It should now be possible to simply raise the lid. Don't. Maybe you shouldn't. What's this? Just a feeling. A warning from some part of you. That's weird. Whatever. Open the lid. The smell of rotten food rises to greet you. You see soggy cartons, dirty rags, and organic waste. Blech. Blech. Gross. We're just in time. This hasn't been emptied for over a week. Blech. Blech. Jesus. 
All right. Uh, yeah. Christ. Uh, why does it have to have the sounds? Jesus. Ugh. Okay. Uh, let's look under the boxes of carton. You see milk and egg rest with one broken egg in it. Some pasta wrapper. Picking up the soggy packages somehow feels familiar. You've done this before. The movements are recorded in your elbows. The methodology in your fingers. You're used to this. Used to what? Dumpster diving? No. Searching for evidence in the trash. Okay. Dive further. A box falls into pieces in your hands. Batiste Sole cereal. There are plastic pasta packages below. And turbo noodles. Nothing of note, however. Alright, let's pick up the rags. Pick at the rags. Among the threadbare kitchen towels, something catches your eye. A pair of denim trousers. Grab them. As the legs of the slime-covered jeans begin to unspool from the garbage, a rank corpse smell fills the air. Oh, Jesus. The victim's clothes? <laughs> Cadaver in odor is faint. If these belong to the deceased, they were removed when he was still in the early stages of decay. Drop them in here, officer. The lieutenant produces a black plastic bag marked evidence from his pocket. Bag the trousers. Guitar marked blue jeans. Pocket empty or empty. He wore them with a belt too, a white belt. The loops appear stretched, but... He looks into the container. The belt is missing. That's it. Do you see anything else in there? I have another bag here. Something slimy catches your eye. Nope. Reach for it. A drab, long-sleeved shirt, olive-colored, appears from the food waste, dripping with pus. Ugh, why use that word to describe it? Ah! Alright, back the shirt. This is a military type overgarment. No label or serial number. This is the kind of rib knit shirt that's worn over light armor to conceal it in an urban scenario. Anything more? The rest of the rags are just kitchen variety waste. A yellow old mug that catches your eye. But other than that... A thrown out towel, a mug, that's all. Alright, we should go to Gart again and ask if he knows who put the clothes in the trash. It could be as simple as someone from the hostel cleaning the yard. Or... that one. I'd advise against confronting that force. Uh... well... It didn't turn out so well before, but who knows? It might turn out well this time. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we need to ask the kids who put them there. The fuck's he on about? Kids? You hear that, Kuno? He thinks you're an infant or something. See? Uh, you think someone from the Rolling and Max might have been involved here? Not really. All we know is the victim's clothes are in the trash. The lid was locked, and his establishment had the key. It's just a small loose thread. Okay. The lieutenant nods, then looks back into the trash container. Let's keep looking. It's just organic waste, cold and slimy on your hands. Apple and potato pills, mostly. Unidentified sludge, and the occasional chicken bone thrown in for good measure. But hey, what's this? What? A blue piece of plastic sticks out from the apple peels. It's shiny. Looks like the corner of something. Pick it out. They look badly damaged, but you can still make out forms and notes, written in a man's handwriting. Ah, a clipboard. Officer, is that your paperwork? No, it can't be, or I don't know what this is. Wait. The lady that quit because of me said that she found something stuffed into the toilet. This must be it. I don't know what this is, but I know exactly what this is. It is. Look. The plastic has the RCM street grid on it. You've even got an autopsy form in there. A miserable looking slip of paper sticks to the board. If you don't mind my asking, how could you have let your paperwork end up in the trash? Must have been cramping my style. It has a foreboding quality to it. Maybe I needed to lose it for the great bloodletting to be get. What the fuck? Or, I think I don't want to be a cop. I didn't want to be a cop anymore. That's why I tried to flush my cop life down the toilet. I'd rather not talk about it right now. Yeah, I think it's actually three. It's odd for this guy to be have an option that's so... What's the word? 
introspective. Well... He doesn't know what to say. Lucky we found it. You should take stock of what remains. Just to be sure, some has not made it into the hands of the RCM's adversaries. Organized crime and the like. There might have been police secrets in your notes. Okay, I'll do that. It would also not hurt to start taking notes on the case. Now, tell me what your eagle eyes see. Or are we finished? <laughs> Was that Lord of the Rings reference? Right. The mug. I'm getting that mug too. You pick out a broken mug with an oddly racist depiction of the yellow man frolicking in saffron. An antique? Only in its social sensibility. Mother of mercy. Take the mug. Mm -hmm. The lieutenant briefly glances at the mug then returns his sight to the trash. Ay, ay, ay. Close the lid. The container sounds a muffled gong. Good thing I was wearing gloves, huh? That's one thing of the least. I think we got it all. Alright. Oh, what's this? Volumetric ship compressor. Hmm. <laughs> Bizarre scientific news from Revachol West today, where a police officer's shit has been observed at a pressure of around 495 gigadecimals. These metallic hydrogen levels of shit togetherness were thought to exist only at the center of collapsing stars, not law officials. It remains to be seen how long the ship's singularity lasts. Ah, uh, before I go on, you see that thing in the art? Is that meant to be a visual representation of what that's supposed to look like? Because that's gross, and I feel weird. <laughs> Alright. Let's get back to that and this. Okay. I guess, uh... Those will just continue for now. Let's take a look, though. So we got the damaged leather ledger and the yellow man rug. This broken ear eared mug somehow makes made its way into the whirling rags dumpster. It depicts a person of Samaritan descent frolicking in a field of saffron flowers, buck tooth, and grinning feeble mindedly. It seems to be a cheap knockoff of some colonial era antique. It's just a racist mug. What's there to read here? Yeah, I was thinking. Not much. I was thinking the same thing. There's quite a lot to read into here, actually. Look at all that content. Oh boy, here we go. What are you going to say about a broken, tossed away mug that you dug out of the garbage? Uh, this mug is an example of prejudice. I'm going to use that as an example of what not to do. I'm going to push this into the face of every merchant I find and tell them this is your inane ideology. The mug will be useful. By denouncing it, I can earn political capital to mask my badass hustling, i.e. fraud and embezzlement, or this mug didn't belong in the trash, it was just a funny mug, can't anyone laugh anymore? Jesus. I was just gonna go with number one. But it was in the trash. Why not just call it out when you see it? Or do some volunteering work. Just finish your case, detective. <laughs> Okay, I like. I think I said this last time, but I do love the fact that even if you pick the quote-unquote normal choice, the game just laughs at you anyway. All right, and damaged ledger. It's the ledger you found in the trash. A pitiful cabbage of white and yellow papers hanging from plastic board, barely held together by a metal clip. This sad display is made complete by the faint smell of urinal cleaner. Anything else? There's a piece of toilet paper, or is it cleaning tissue? No, it's toilet paper, desperately sticking to the back of the blue plastic clipboard. It's a metaphor for you. All right, inspect the toilet paper. It's just toilet paper sticking to the back of the plastic clipboard. You can take it off if you want. Maybe that's kitchen, t kitchen tissue? They look exactly the same. If you want it to be kitchen tissue, it can be kitchen tissue. It's not, though. It's toilet paper. Thanks, Perception. Let's take it off. Still wet, the toilet paper, I mean, kitchen tissue, sorry, <laughs> peels off the plastic easily. All you have to do is shake it off your finger, and voila, the ledger now looks marginally better. Inspect the clip. An aluminium block runs the width of the board, biting down on the paperwork. 
Its crocodile teeth are the only thing keeping the papers together. A regular pencil, the tip worn down to nothing, has been attached to the clip. Run your fingers across the aluminium. The surface is interrupted by a silvery sticker. It's rectangular, sparkling with iridescence. You don't know how you didn't notice it before. Looks like an official mark, made to be low visibility outside the right circumstances. It is similar to the RCM watermark on your blazer the lieutenant mentioned. Didn't he say something about the headlights of his motor carriage? That you can read these there? Lieutenant, is this one of the hologram watermarks you mentioned? Points to the sticker. What? Yes, uh, allogen watermark used for adding information to RCM property. Interesting. What kind of information? It depends. Aside from an anti-counterfeiting stamp, mine has my station number and address. The information varies by date of issue. Interesting. Maybe this thing has my address. Maybe yours will have how many cases you've solved. Or that. How can I read it? Any capable light with the right wavelength will do. You mentioned the headlights of your Kinema? Yes, RCM vehicles have headlights tuned especially to reveal halogen watermarks. This right. means you can read the watermarks if you just turn the lights on. That's all? Thank you. Okay. Okay. Like a bunch of sodden papers sag from the clipboard in your hand. It's a sorry sight. Oh joy, the dichotomy between us is, well, obvious. Browse the white papers. They're not exactly white. They're yellowed in patches by sunlight and alcohol and covered in dense blue handwriting. Ink escapes into watercolor patterns, reaching its tendrils across entire pages. The paper itself is checkered with faint red lines forming short paragraphs. Once in a while, there's a red stamp that exclaims, case files commit to paper. The case files themselves are plenty. You count more than a hundred sodden, crumpled up, earmarked pages falling apart in your hands. They appear to be sufficiently organized and extremely dense, if mostly illegible. What is in there? What are they about? Work, strife, poverty, the Jamrock Quarter. These are handwritten logs of investigations dating back to January 51, this year. The exact number is hard to estimate, due to missing pages and an odd naming convention. But there are at least 20, maybe 30 cases, undertaken, not completed, mind you. It's the middle of March. You have attempted two cases a week on average. What do you mean? Is that all? That's it? It's two cases a week. A good caseload, Lieutenant? There is a mention of naming convention in there? Or count pages. I have to open an official case to their room or I'm done inspecting these. Uh, that's it? The notebook is annual. It says 51 on what remains of its cover. A molten strap of cardboard. Everything prior to this must have belonged to a previous volume. In short, there was more. Interesting. Is two cases a week a good caseload, Lieutenant? Huh? Two complex cases to undertake is a lot, yes. You really have to push yourself. I would not suggest it, lest you start making mistakes. Two cases a week appears to have been my load, Lieutenant. I'm not sure I completed them, though. Two? That's a lot. I didn't mean to say you are making mistakes, by the way. That was presumptuous of me. I'm sure I made plenty of mistakes. I burned out all right. A nice brisk pace, the way I like it. Uh, judging from my current... Uh, well... Yeah, I think I burned out. That's okay. We all do, sooner or later. Yeah, burnout is a bitch. Like a fan of girls, the checkered papers dry in your hand. The handwriting is extremely dense, if mostly illegible. There was a mention of naming convention here? Yes. It appears you employ a, shall we say, robust yet literary system. Each investigation has its case number written on the margins. Yet, still more tellingly, most are accompanied by a name. A title, one might say even. One that draws inspiration from snoop fiction and vespertine cop show staples. Oh my, and they're written in capital letters too. Yes, all caps. One is called The Next World Mural, another The Square Bullet Hole Murders, 
Another yet. The unsolvable case. More? Others appear more lighthearted. The guys on a couch in an unexpected location. And the murder at the hookah parlor. Even the rare Article 3 collapsing tenement. Murder features prominently throughout. It's going to take an effort to piece these case files together, but it can be done. Once you're done inspecting them up close. Kim, my cases appear to employ some kind of naming convention. You mean the alphanumeric? Officer, precinct, time of arrival at the scene? No, I mean with a non-numeric one, with titles. Oh, you mean the titular? Yes, well, so do I. In our defense, almost everyone in the RCM does. Why is that? It's a holdover from the early days of the RCM, right after the revolution, when the organization had little idea how to do things. It persists in an unofficial capacity. Officers use these titles to refer to their work among themselves. I seem to have a name the case, the square bullet hole murders. Again, in your defense, I seem to have named one, the man with the hole in his head. That was a real person. His death was real. Still, I named it that, to amuse myself. I pray his loved ones never find out. What happened to him? Rail spiked through the head. He died. It was a workplace accident. Ouch. All right, count the pages. I have to open an official case. Is there room? There is, for precisely one more. Fifteen pages near the end remain untouched by the damage. The checkered grid forms a structure of passages breaking the case into subtasks to accomplish. Once all the tasks are accomplished, the case is complete. All right, I commit to paper using the pen leave that Lena gave me. The tasks you've completed flow out of the kind green ape pen in a brash freehand similar to the rest of the letters. The wording comes easily. It's almost robotically simple, a language developed for mental rigor and simplicity. Inspect the victim's body. Interview the cafeteria manager. It's not exactly poetry, but poetry would be out of place. Cross out the ones you've already finished. A satisfying slash sounds across the paper. You're done, it seems to say. And you, and you. True. Crossing things off a list is very satisfying. You're a swashbuckler with that pen, Harry. And it feels good. Feels like completion. Harry? Things to be done, and things already done. The composition of reality. This is an extremely useful tool for a detective of the citizen's militia. Now all that remains is to name the case. Lieutenant, have you by any chance named our case? No, actually. Any ideas? Hmm. The Hanged Man. The Furies are at home in the mirror. The setting sun. Shit on a stick. Or actually, I don't have one. I mean, this one's very cool, but I'm curious to see what he's going to say. Oh, well, then maybe I can suggest one. Go ahead. The Hanged Man. Uh... Well, it works. Solid name. Thank you. I think so, too. Good and normal. <laughs> uh, I'm going to start calling it The Hanged Man. It's good to be sorted without. Alright, done inspecting these. You don't exactly close them so much as distance yourself from the smelly papers they're a little further from your nose now can i read the case files now yes you can piece them together using the alphanumeric code on the margin it always begins with hdb 41 then date of initialization and time of arrival on the scene followed by the title for example HDB 41120-11700, The Next World Mural. How long does it take to read a case? It takes about half an hour to piece one together, using the system you've devised. Where do you want to start? Hmm. It's quarter past two, not so let's not do that for now. In the meanwhile, a bunch of sodden papers still sags from the clipboard. Browse the yellow papers. In the back, you see thin, translucent copy of paper. Some neon yellow, some bright red. All covered in boxes, like marching armies. These look like official forms, waiting to be filled out. Then rip them from the binder 
and hand them out, according to type of form. So, what type of forms are these? Are there? Three. The topmost are misconduct fines. The middle ones are station calls. And the bottommost are field autopsy forms. Each is easy enough to make sense of. You don't have to be an intellectual giant to do police work. All right, it's conduct fine. A monetary penalization ranging from 20 to 250 real. Severe cases allow for 1,000 real, but that requires special paperwork. The details of issuing these fines are spread out over the rest of the fields, but they appear pleasantly vague. Oh ho, all right, station call. These are quite sinister in turn. They give a date and time for the person to appear at the specified precinct police station. Below the call are the criminal charges you risk by not appearing. All in a print so small it could be considered downright cute. So it's like a warrant? Sort of? I don't know. I'm not a cop or anything. Field autopsy. A dozen pages of thin copy paper, bright red in color. You see the parameters of a deceased human form waiting to be filled in. Age. Sex. Condition of internal organs. Alright, enough of these. Yes. All that remains now is to fill those forms and hand them to people. Fines for wrongdoers. Interview requests for bad guys. And field autopsies to dead guys. The rest of the stinking cellulose is much worse for wear. Being sandwiched between the board and the rest of the paperwork must have spared the fragile copy of paper. All right, look at the clipboard. It's made of dark blue plastic, hard enough to beat someone to submission with. The edges are rounded, however. The U4 size board feels thick and heavy in your hand. Light shimmers on its wet surface. On the back, you see the embossed letters RCM. Shake the ledger. Something rattles inside, ever so lightly. Is there a hidden compartment? And something small inside? Light, made of paper or cardboard, or dried flowers perhaps? Permeables, it's not hidden per se. The compartment is made for permeable materials that would get damaged if something happened to it. Peek inside. The plastic shimmers like lapis lazuli, but it is not see-through. You cannot see to its center. So how would I open it? Hmm. With your hands, you four sized pages hang from the clip screwed to the top of the board. Hmm. Lonesome long way home. Hold on. Okay. I don't think I can open it until this thing's done. So, uh, I will do this later. Smell the ledger. The acidic stench of rotting food is rubbed off on the cellulose. It now forms the base of the experience. This base surrounded by a faint air of spoiled meat, the stuff of death itself, and then sprinkled liberally with the citrus zest of toilet cleaner. Oh joy. You know, like the bits they put into public piss bowls, probably called Fermi Discrete, or Axel, or something. At some point in its journey, the ledger has seen the inside of a public toilet. I know, I know. Sylvie already told me I dunked in the toilet. If you knew it was dunked in the toilet before getting chucked into the trash, why are you sniffing it? The option to sniff was there, so... <laughs> uh, I'm a policeman. This is police work. I'm just following leads, you know? Maybe, uh, maybe it's my fetish? Maybe. You ever think of that, Nose? <laughs> no. The option was there, so... So you wanted to get in on the trash toilet stink collab? Find out what happens when those two get funky together? Okay, pal. Are you angry with me, Nose? Yeah. Turns out your nose doesn't like self-indulgent literal shit huffing. Kel fucking surprise. Come on. No more. The ledger is going back down, away from your nose now. That was very fucking meta. <laughs> Alright. Let's take a look at the body. There he still is, looking right through you with his white eyes. The body below is entirely dedicated to that corpse smell. Alright. We've listened to this before, so let's try endurance stuff again. 
<laughs> Again. The corpse laughs at you, pus dripping from its mouth. You will never be able to hold it in. It's always too much. You must be shitting me. Every time it happens, it gets worse and worse. There's nothing more to throw up now. All that's left is crying and convulsing dryly at the same time. Even though I got my shit compressed, how is it possible I failed again or just cry? Yeah, I, I got my shit compressed. What the fuck? I'm at a loss as well. I could swear your shit was together, detective. Sometimes even that is not enough. Life is unfair. What do I do now? Officer, you just need to be stronger. Learn to keep it in long enough for us to work. There's nothing else to do. Relax. It's okay if you don't make it today. The bloated corpse isn't going anywhere. <sighs> okay, you know what? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where? Where? Endurance. Endurance, you piece of shit. You listen to me. You, you fucking listen to me, Endurance. You're gonna get your shit together, and you're gonna to let me look at this fucking body, or I swear to fuck, I am going to fuck you up. Jesus Christ. Okay. Let's try this again. Looking right. Oh my f- and If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like, subscribe, and maybe watch some more. Be seeing ya.